Hi there. I recently needed to replace a couple of 9V batteries. One went into my son's guitar preamp and the other into the kitchen scale. This exhausted my stock on these and since they are used for quite a number of other things as well, including some of my older multimeters, I looked at deals to get some new ones. Ideally I wanted to switch to rechargeables but the high prices and the less than stellar quality prevented this so far. By chance I spotted these Vata cells in my local Scrufix outlet and as the price was around the same as a non-rechargeable one I gave it a try. On the packet it claims to be using nickel metal hydrate chemistry and to provide a moderate 200 milliamp hours which because it isn't a ridiculously exaggerated number inspired my confidence it may actually be true. Now 200 milliamp hours isn't a lot but then 9 volt batteries are not meant to be loaded very heavily. The other data on the battery says it's to be charged for 16 hours at 20 milliamps but that quick charge is possible. Given that information, I decided to run four scenarios. Discharge with 20 milliamps to represent a reasonably low load. To be fair, reloads for 9 volt batteries are often just in the order of 2 milliamps, but who has time to run tests for 100 hours? So I think one tenth of the capacity as a load is a practical compromise. To test the behavior at fairly high loads without endangering the battery, I chose 100 milliamps, which is half the capacity. The other practical reason is that 100 milliamps is the lowest discharge current I can select in my charger. I decided to mirror these settings for charging, so 20 milliamps for 16 hours because that's the procedure written on the battery itself and a more practical quick charge with 100 milliamps. As the first test I chose to run 20 milliamps discharge from the pre-charge state that is using the battery fresh from the blister pack without any additional charging. This is my setup I used for the 20 milliamp discharge allowing me to measure the capacity. None of my normal methods like chargers or electronic loads would allow such a low current. I used two 220 ohm resistors to form a 440 ohm resistor drawing an average of 20 milliamps. It would be exactly 20 milliamps at 8.8 .8 volts battery voltage as you can easily calculate. At higher voltages, say 9.5, the current would be slightly higher, 21.5 milliamps, while at 7.5 volts it would be down to 17 milliamps. The voltage is measured by my trusty old Solartron 750p multimeter. Not because I want it to be very precise, but because this test will run many hours and as a bench multimeter it is mains powered. The other reason is that I can connect it via my GPIB to USB converter to a PC and record the measurements in a spreadsheet every couple of seconds. The slight problem of this approach is that there is no auto shut off, so after 10 to 12 hours when the voltage drops to 7 volts you need to be at hand and disconnect the battery to avoid damaging it. So with all this we get a nice voltage over time graph like this here on the left. How to turn this into capacity? It is easy to get from the voltage over time to current over time since we use a constant 440 ohm resistor for discharge. So now that we have a current graph, capacity is the area under the curve. In other words, we need to integrate. For such a simple curve, this can be done easily and with m more than enough accuracy by using the average function in a spreadsheet. In fact, if you have a list of voltages, you can do the average on the voltage first and do the conversion to average current without having to calculate the current for each sample. This is the record from the discharging of the battery from its pre-charged state. For this run, the value was sampled every 1.8 seconds. So we got quite a number of samples. Let's just scroll down. We'll see how many. So here we are. The last sample is at 15132 and it's a time of 28,039 seconds, which is about 7 hours and 43 minutes. Let's remember that it's 15132 
and calculate the average voltage like so so equals average b2 which is the column where the volts are to b15132 which is the last entry and here we go we have the average voltage of 8.5.35 volts and we want to know the current so we calculate it using the this value which is in e3 and divided by 440 ohm and we get 19 milliamps but we want it in uh, so yeah it was actually in amps so we want it in milliamps so we want to multiply this by 1000 so this is in milliamps okay now to calculate the capacity we could multiply the average current with the total time elapsed which since we started at zero is simply the time value in cell a15132 and divide this by 3600 to get the hours so let's do that so we take this current in e4 e4 and multiply it with a time value in a15132 divided by 3600 seconds in an hour and there you go 151.1 milliamp hours capacity so it's not quite 200 milliamps but then the battery was stored for who knows how long so 75 percent isn't bad initially i thought to measure the current flowing into the battery during charging from my bench power supply a 20 milliamp constant current but it turned out this is totally unnecessary during the first charge cycle i kept an eye on the current reading on the bench power supply and it was always constant 20 milliamps all you need to do is set a timer to alert you when the 16 hours are over. Here are the results of my first three charge and discharge cycles, all with 20 milliamp current. As we've already seen, the pre-charge out of the box provided a respectable 151 milliamp hours, or 75% of the stated capacity. I then recharged the battery for 16 hours and 20 milliamps and ran another discharge which provided 225 milliamp hours which is more than a promised 200. Just to be sure that this wasn't a one-off I repeated the hole one more time and the third cycle came up with 250 milliamps. So I think we can confidently say that at low discharge current the battery meets its spec. There's even some spare capacity. But how does it handle higher charge and discharge currents? I'm going to use my trusty old IMAX B6 charger for that. The charger is set to nickel metal hydrate batteries and discharge mode using 0.1 amp and a cutoff voltage of 7 volts. As you can see the battery voltage on the upper right is slowly decreasing while the capacity in milliamp hours below and the elapsed time counts are both increasing. Very close to the 7 volt cutoff limit now. And there we are, 207 milliamp hours after just over 2 hours, exactly as you would expect for a battery with 200 milliamp hours capacity. After letting the battery rest for an hour or so, I changed the B6 to nickel metal hydro charge mode with a current limit of 0.1 amps. We see the battery voltage on the upper right is slowly increasing as well as the capacity readout in milliamp hours and the elapsed time count. You can see that the B6 is not using constant current, instead it does some kind of pulse charging. In long pulses it applies charge current which drives the battery voltage up 
and then turns the current off to give the battery a short rest which causes the battery voltage to drop again. Presumably they found that this method pumps more charge into a battery or may be less stressful. Compared to the discharge, where we know it will end when the voltage drops below 7 volts, it is much harder to predict when the charge is finished. You see, we have put in at least a nominal capacity of 200 milliamp hours, but since no nickel metal hydrate is 100% efficient, we have to put in additional capacity. With a constant 20 milliamp charge, we put in 320 milliamp hours for 200 milliamp hours of battery capacity, or 160%. The pulse charging is supposed to be more efficient. Traditionally, chargers monitor the voltage gradient, which should show a small dip when the battery is full. I don't know how the B6 does it, because the pulse charging makes the battery voltage going up and down. Somehow it decided the battery is full after taking less than two and a half hours to pump 229 milliamp hours in, which is just 115% over capacity. It does sound a bit on a low side. I wonder if that battery is really charged to the same level as with the 320 milliamp hours using constant 20 milliamps for 16 hours. Only one way to find out. Here we go, discharging at 0.1 amp after giving the battery a short rest. Nearly there now. We are above the 200 milliamp hour mark, so we still meet the spec even after the quick charge. Well, it's 203 milliamp hours after the quick charge compared to 207 after slow charge. A small drop, true, but th that loss is hardly worth doing only slow charge cycles. I have added the results of the high current charge and discharge cycles to the bottom of the table you have already seen. In both high current discharges, the battery meets its promised 200 milliamp hours. You may have expected a dissection of this battery, but it performs so well that I'm going to disappoint you, because I want to continue using it. In any case, there isn't anything magic in a battery like this. It contains simply seven small nickel metal hydrate cells wired in series. As for its voltage values, empty, nominal and full, they are exactly what you get if you multiply the familiar values for one cell by 7. The datasheet can be found in many places on the web, just search for VATA 56722. There are quite some interesting values here, but let's just focus on a few. The typical capacity shows you get 200 milliamps at 0.2C, that would be 40 milliamps. We have seen that it meets the 200 milliamp hours for 0.1 C or 20 milliamps, as well as for 0.5 C's or 100 milliamps. But at a load of 200 milliamps or 1 C, you can expect only 170 milliamp hours. While I could test that, I have no intention to ever use a 9 volt battery for something that draws 200 milliamps. The charge retention is specified as 75%, which is exactly what my battery had. While there is some number embossed into the battery, it would need decoding if it is even a date code. Without knowing the manufacturing date, we can't know if my measured 75% is good or bad. In any case, the fact that they are marked pre-charged means they are using similar technology to inner loops to limit self-discharge. Very nice. Last not least, the charge condition just talks about the standard 16 hour charge and trickle charge after that. It does not mention quick charge, but it's written on the battery itself and it seems to work fine, at least from the iMAX B6 with 100 milliamps. If you are in the UK, you can get this battery from Schoolfix for £4.99, which is extremely competitive and far better than eBay offers or Amazon, at least last time I checked. But even at slightly higher prices than the Screwfix offer, this is still a very good rechargeable 9V battery. Thanks for watching.